Okay. Now you're ready to go. <laughs> okay, thank you. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to the public key crypto session. Uh, I'm Hyung Terry and a co chair of this public key cryptography session with Carla uh, Rafford. Uh, this session consists, consists of two sub sessions without break. Uh, each sub session has four, four papers. Uh, for each paper, uh, we will take a five minute presentation by the author and five minute QA. Uh, during the search presentation, uh, if you have any question, uh, please feel free to post your question on the chat room of Zoom or Julie. Uh, the first talk is about uh, privacy preserving pattern matching on encrypted data. Uh, the, the authors are uh, Anis Bukakria. Uh, Frederick Kupens and uh, Nora Kupens. And the speaker is Anis. Uh, Anis, are you ready? Anis? Um, yes, I'm ready. Thank you. Thanks for the introduction. Yeah. Um, so, um, yes, I'm, I'm, I'm going to start my presentation with a very quick uh, motivation. Um, so this year, we estimate the total uh, percentage of, uh, of encrypted web traffic to be around 85%. Uh, so as you all know, end-to-end -end, um, encryption ensures the confidentiality of the exchange data. However, it, um, it does not allow any processing of the encrypted data, which impacts uh, several uh, use cases, <coughs> sorry, including um, intrusion detection. Um, so, um, and actually this is now being exploited by adversaries. So in 2020, more than 70% uh, of, of malware campaigns are encrypting attacks to bypass um, uh, intrusion detection systems. So the main challenge we, um, we are working on, in, we, we worked on in, in this uh, paper is how to perform pattern matching on an end-to-end -end encryption. So we considered um, a system uh, composed of um, uh, four entities, um, a sender, a receiver, an intrusion detection service provider, and a detection pattern provider. So um, the intrusion detection service provider um, is considered as a third party entity mandated by the um, receiver to perform uh, intrusion detection on incoming traffic. Um, and the pattern provider represents the um, security editors that are providing attack signatures. So um, in this use case, we consider um, um, the intrusion detection service provider and the detection pattern um, uh, provider to be uh, honest but curious entities. And uh, we consider the sender to be an interested entity. Um, so what do we know exactly about pattern matching on encrypted data? So um, we have um, a blind box and blind IDS, which are solutions that have been tailored for uh, signature-based intrusion detection on encrypted traffic. Um, these solutions are quite practical. Uh, however, they are um, useful only if all the patterns um, have the same size. Uh, in addition, they may cause uh, false um, negatives. Um, searchable encryption um, with shiftable trapdoor has turned out to be the most interesting solution for pattern matching on encrypted data. So um, it supports arbitrary um, patterns uh, matching at um, uh, at any, I mean, it supports searching um, of, uh, for arbitrary uh, patterns at any offset of the data uh, while ensuring um, uh, traffic and distinguishability to the pattern matching service provider. Um, unfortunately, SEST cannot uh, protect the, um, um, the uh, uh, detect pattern. Uh, in addition, um, it requires a public key of the size um, linear to the size of the, of the data to be analyzed. So the main intuition behind our solution relies on the fact that the sizes of the attack uh, patterns are very small um, uh, compared to the size of the uh, exchange data. And the idea is then uh, is to uh, fragment the data into a set of uh, small segments of the same size. And um, therefore to uh, encrypt the, um, those segments separately and uh, to allow actually to detect the uh, patterns that may straddle um, those uh, segments, we build the third one um, that will be composed of the last, last L elements of the left side the fragment and the first L element of the right side one. With L here uh, representing the uh, largest pattern size that can be uh, searched on the data. 
So this fragmentation uh, technique um, allow us to build the construction that requires keys and trap doors that um, of size um, only linear to the size of the largest pattern to be, uh, to be matched. So let me now give you an overview of the construction. Um, so at a very high level, um, so the, um, the, the, the receiver starts by generating a secret key, public key and the trapdoor generation key. Um, then the, the pattern provider and the receiver interactively generates um, um, the uh, trapdoors for the uh, patterns to be, uh, to be searched. Uh, and those patterns will be actually sent to uh, the service provider. Um, the sender will um, then fragment the data um, to be um, to, to be sent, um, encrypt them, and send them to the service provider, who will use um, the uh, trapdoor to uh, to check the presence of the patterns in in the encrypted data. And uh, finally, the um, um, the receiver can use the secret key to decrypt the data. Um, so our construction is uh, the first that provides. Um, um, uh, correct detection for arbitrary patterns and uh, adaptive and distinguishability for both encrypted data and uh, detection patterns uh, without actually um, uh, requiring uh, very large um, um, keys, uh, like for example, in the case of CEST or uh, very large trapdoors um, like, um, uh, like the case of a predicate encryption based solution. Um, in addition, uh, as you can see, the size of the uh, public key and, uh, and, and, and the trap doors are only linear to the size of the largest pattern to be matched. Um, we also achieve um, optimality in terms of the number of re uh, required trap doors um, as we require a single trap door for each pattern. And uh, finally, um, the, um, the search complexity of our approach is constant uh, um, in the size of the pattern to be matched. This allows us to uh, drastically reduce the, the search time for large patterns uh, compared to existing solutions. Um, so more details about the construction um, are in the full uh, presentation uh, and in the paper. Uh, thank you very much for your attention. Okay, uh, thanks Anis. Uh, and, uh, there is no questions posted on the chat room. But uh, I have one question. If my understanding is correct, uh, your scheme supports uh, uh, exact pattern matching, right? Yes. Yes. So, is it useful in uh, application scenario? In application scenario, uh, if we extend the range of match types to more complex one, like uh, substring match or wildcard match. Yes, of course we can. We can do a substring match. So um, the the construction we, we we are proposing in the paper uh, allows to um, to perform exact uh, pattern matching or substring uh, matching. So we can um, we can actually search uh, any substring of, of a given string at any position of the data. Yeah. Okay. Um, hello. I would also like to um, to ask something. Um, can you, is it easy to get rid of the pairings? Do you think you could achieve a construction without pairings? Um, no, actually, we need at least to uh, perform um, um, pairings operation when, um, when we need to search the, 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 the patterns inside the encrypted data. And uh, as I said, we need only to perform uh, two, um, uh, um, uh, two uh, pairings operation regardless the um, the, um, the, the, the length of the pattern we are going to, to, to search. But we cannot achieve the, um, the, um, the, we cannot achieve correctness if we don't use uh, uh, pairings. Okay. And what about um, other security models? Because you said you had some entities that were honest but curious. Um, yes, um, we suppose, I mean, we, yes, we, we only suppose the, um, the honest but curious model for the service provider and for the um, uh, pattern provider, um, as they need actually to, um, to the, the pattern provider is actually um, supposed to uh, provide correct uh, patterns 
uh, that allows to um, correctly detect attacks, otherwise he can um, he can um, break the, the, the privacy of the data. Um, and we, uh, the service provider is supposed to, to I mean, we, we, we take um, um, the honest but curious um, um, model for the service provider because we, he's supposed to, do, uh, to provide correct, correct, correct answer. Um, uh, otherwise, I mean, if we take the, um, the, um, the, 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 um, 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 the, the model, um, um, the interested model uh, for both entities, we cannot achieve correctness and we, can, and we cannot achieve, achieve the privacy of the data. Yep, uh, thank you, Anis. Okay, uh, and uh, let's move on the next paper. And the, next, the title of the next paper is uh, non-committing encryption with constant type text expansion from standard assumptions. And the authors are uh, Yusuke Yoshida, uh, Fuyuki Kitagawa, uh, Keita Kusagawa, and Keisuke Tanaka. And the speaker is Yusuke, uh, Yusuke right? Yes, thank yep. you for introduction. Sharing screen now, is it okay? Yes. Yes. Uh, this talk is about uh, non-committing encryption. In short, NC is joint work with Kitagawa, Kiski Kusagawa, and Kiski Tanaka. So, non-committing encryption is a public encryption scheme with a special security property. And we can use it to establish secure channels in adaptively secure multi-party computation protocols, where the ad adversary corrupts parties adaptively and obtained secret key and randomness of public key encryption used in the protocol. In exchange for such achieving such security property, so non-committing encryption has a large, large ciphertext. So we focus on ciphertext expansion, and that is a ratio of ciphertext length and length of the message. A public key expansion is defined in a similar way. In our previous work of the last stage clip, we constructed the NC scheme with order of lambda ciphertext expansion from obliviously sampleable version of Cameron encryption. And we instantiated it based on the GDH problem. In this work, we instantiate it based on the LW problem. And then use the Cameron encryption, construct a non-committing encryption scheme with constant ciphertext expansion. But at first step, uh, the scheme is not actually not a full-fledged non-committing encryption. So we defined it as weak NCE. Then we show how to amplify weak NCE into a full-fledged NCE scheme while keep its ciphertext expansion constant. In this transformation, we use a primitive called wiretap code. So this is a list of previous works. And so our contribution is the first non-committing encryption schemes with a constant ciphertic expansion based on DDH or LW problem. To be more specific, the constant is approximately 27. And furthermore, uh, we, we show that uh, when instantiated it from the LW problem, and the public key expansion is better than our DDH based scheme. The main observation of this work is that we can find weak NCE in the construction of previous NCE schemes. And please refer to the full video or our paper for details of the definition of weak NCE and the reason why the construction of weak NCE. Briefly, uh, we got NCE scheme with constant ciphertext expansion by modifying our previous scheme. But it only satisfies weak correctness and weak security. Weak correctness say that the decryption result flips with probability epsilon. And the weak security says that the adversary can obtain half of the message bits from the ciphertext. So weak non-committing encryption cannot establish secure channel in adaptive MPC. However, it does establish the wiretap channel in MPC. Wiretap channel 
is a channel model proposed by uh, Weiner. In this model, upon sending a message X, the receiver can get a little noisy message, while the adversary can obtain very noisy message. This situation where the adversary is affected by more noise than the receiver is a natural situation in wireless communication. And we can use wiretap calls to transmit a message correctly to the receiver while keep it secure against the adversary. And Berari et al. proposed uh, is cryptographic security definition. Uh, in this work, uh, we defined an NC style security notion for wiretap calls and use it to amplify weak NC. And the rate of wiretap calls, uh, that is the message links over the code as length, it can be at most the capacity of the channel. And this uh, capacity of the channel is constant. So our amplified NC scheme has uh, still uh, has constant cybertic expansion. So this is the last of the, my uh, talk. Um, in summary, a non committing encryption is a key to the established security channel in adaptively secure NCC. And we, we defined a weak non committing encryption and constructed to from a camera on encryption, which can be instantiated to from EDH or LW. And we amplified the weak NCE using uh, wiretap course. Then uh, the resulting NC scheme has achieved the first constant cybernetic expansion. And the rest of the includes public key encryption. That's all my talk. Uh, okay, thanks. Okay. Uh, uh, I have one question. Uh, uh, can you replace the uh, wire tape course by other uh, similar course? By uh, similar course. Uh, You mean, well, it's a kind of uh, error correcting code, but it satisfies security notion, unlike standard error correcting codes. Uh, uh, and there are uh, literature, in literature, uh, there are primitive with different name, but it is essentially the same as wiretap codes. And we can also regard wiretap codes as a kind of secret sharing scheme. I, I would also like to ask a question. So yeah. um, what about the, the public key expansion? And so the, why do you, do you think this uh, um, lambda square, for instance, for DDH is unavoidable or do you think um, you still haven't found a way to, to reduce it yet? From DDH, there's no DDH, uh, the technique we use uh, able to, <laughs> Uh, reduce cyphatic expansion in exchange for making public key expansion large. So from DDH, mm, I don't know if we can reduce public key expansion. But with other, other, with our, our other assumptions, AWE reduces a uh, little and possibly from, uh, maybe it can be reduced from another assumption or construction, but I don't know. No. So, and do you know? Do you think that the the um, public key um, expansion that you have in this uh, for this LWE construction, do you think it's optimal, or do you think you expect that you can get some asymptotic improvement? Or, or, Could be, but it will require another technique. Okay, so I don't see any further questions in the chat. Um, so I guess we can move on to the next session. Thank you. Thank you for your talk. So next, so, so next speaker will be, um, we have subvert CAM to break them, practical algorithm substitution attacks on public key encryption um, by Rong Mao, Romangos Chen. Uh, 
Hi. So can you see my screen? Yep. Yes. Okay, so thanks for introduction. Um, uh, our talk uh, is about practical algorithms of student attack on public inclusion, and it's, this is the joint work with uh, Xing Yi Huang and Moti. So first, sorry, let's um, wrong mouth. Sorry, your camera is switched Hi. off. I don't know if you, uh, it's on purpose, but it switched off your camera. Sorry, wait a moment. So is it okay now? Yeah. Oh, sorry. Okay, so well, first let's look at what uh, algorithms of system attack uh, motivated by the widespread uh, deliberate corruption of uh, software or hardware in uh, cryptography implementations. Uh, Bradley, um, Patterson and Rogaway uh, proposed a new notion called algorithms of student attack or ASA for short, uh, crypto 2014. Um, uh, in the ASA model, the attacker could replace the legitimate encryption algorithm by an altered version, which is embedded with a backdoor key created by himself. So two properties are form formalized for uh, substitution attacks. The first is called undetected. The, uh, undetectability, which says that the detector who is usually the users in reality cannot distinguish the legitimate algorithm from the severity algorithm in a, in a black box, uh, he knows the secret key. And the second is the key which denotes the ability of the attack to recover the user secret key by uh, monitoring the output of the severity algorithm with uh, half of the battle key. So, so far, uh, there have been uh, several works about concrete substitution attacks, again, uh, different primitive, and um, also in different settings. Um, particularly, a uh, generally starts by and, um, this key, which shows that there exists reversal attacks that are applicable to any algorithm with uh, large mean entropy. So they give a logarithmic account, which says that um, no universal and consistent attack is able to embed it in log tables of um, information in the attack or signature in the context in signing entity. The CLK denotes the evidence of the situation uh, to be there. So in this work, we turn to consider public inclusion with the goal of uh, better understanding the impact of public uh, So a major difference from a uh, symmetric primitive such as uh, symmetric encryption and digital signature, public inclusion does not involve the secret key. So the best possible goal for subscription attacks on public encryption algorithm is to recover However, the current bit substitution attacks, especially the logarithmic uh, upper part of uh, emotional attacks, are quite inefficient for subverting the public encryption algorithm. The main reason is that the plan test is usually much longer and fresh in different encryption patterns. And so the uh, adversary needs to collect much more cyber tests to recover the whole plan test successfully. So in our work, we ask the following concrete questions. There exist efficient and low substitution attack on public the instances issues. Uh, previous universal attacks usually need to maintain a global state to indicate of secret key to leak in each round a, a state will persist for a much longer time if the uh, attack goal is so here we mainly consider the more robust attack while the uh, internal state depends on just a small history as some limited dependence on the uh, of uh, pseudo random generators is natural. So this work will provide an alternative answer to the pipe by proposing uh, pro 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 attack that is uh, 
Um, the most challenging attack on computation could be much more dangerous than previously thought. So, initially, by the fact that almost all primary public key encryption construction adopt the hybrid encryption, while a key encapsulation mechanism is to encrypt the plain text by the data encapsulation mechanism. So, for such kind of hybrid encryption, the is usually much shorter than the to recover the session key to break them. So they are we can recover the plain test. However, immediately and much efficiency improvement in subverting public can still produce fresh various innovations. So hence we take a step by comparing the quality of the substitution attack. That could successfully recover session key from a constant number of Server server test. And to the end, we formalize an asymmetric attack model for CAMs and identify a general structure of weakness in existing CAM construction that enables us to mount a much more efficient substitution attack on CAM. Our attack could recover the uh, session key from only two uh, successive uh, server tests. The state lets uh, the previous strengthening require a much smaller than previous in attack. So we offer several instances of subtable things. And this is the end of my short talk. And I invite you to have a look at the complete talk and also have a look at the paper and please ask an email if you have any questions. And thank you for your attention. So, and do you know, do you think that the, the um, public key um, expansion that you have in this, uh, for this LWE, construction <laughs> Uh, sorry, I'm yeah. sorry, we had some connection problems, I think, no? I was hearing, um, anyway, so thank you, Rong Mao, for your talk. Um, do you have any questions? Uh, I don't see any questions on the chat. Um, uh, uh, I have one question. Uh, I think uh, Rongma will need uh, much time, but could you briefly explain how to design to prevent your attack? Okay, so uh, actually the uh, core idea to uh, submit it can is to uh, control the generation of the randomness uh, for the session key uh, encapsulation. So uh, basically, the idea to prevent such attack is to uh, uh, there are there are basically two kinds of uh, approaches. The first kind is to uh, use the deterministic uh, primitive, which means that we just uh, just disallow the randomness. But as we know, such a, a, an approaches uh, may uh, uh, may uh, we we weaken the uh, security because randomness is uh, crucial to uh, reliable security. So the second approach is, is to still permit it, uh, the randomness. But since such a subscription attack is so powerful, so we may need to rely on uh, some additional assumption, uh, like uh, we need to uh, rely on a trusted third party, or we need to rely on uh, uh, like a separate uh, architecture assumption. So uh, let's um, my uh, to uh, roughly uh, uh, can yeah. So I I, uh, I also provide more details in my full version in the e show If you are interested in uh, interested in this uh, uh, 
the topic, and you can uh, find some more details in, in the board version. Thank you. Oh, okay, thank you. Do you plan, so um, do you plan to extend these techniques for other public key um, primitives? So will you, con ex will you continue working on this with? Uh, yeah, but, um, yeah, as far as I know, uh, there are some uh, extension work uh, after, uh, after my, my, my paper, but it's uh, more uh, focused on uh, uh, like uh, the whole cryptography protocol. So as we know, uh, why I, I want to uh, investi investigate the study of the sufficient attack about public key encryption is because the public key encryption algorithm does not involve the secret key. So, uh, but uh, if we uh, take a more full picture, uh, uh, like uh, for the application of public key encryption in the real, real world, so maybe uh, in the full protocol, the, the assessed by the, the uh, the subsection attack it also but as for me but I, I I'm now move, move on to a uh, uh, fox mode on uh, preventing such attack I like uh, what I just mentioned so yeah thank you yeah. okay uh, thank you and the uh, uh, the next talk is uh, efficient homomorphic comparison methods with optimal complexity. And the third are uh, uh, Zhang Yichan, Dong Kim, and Du Yang Kim. And the speaker is Du Yang Kim. Du Yang. Okay, can you hear me? Uh, can you hear me? Yep. Yes. Okay. Okay. So, um, Hello everyone, um, uh, my name is Duyong Kim and I would like to talk about uh, how to compute the uh, comparison operation in homomorphic encryption. And this is joint work with Professor Zhang Yichan and Dr. Dong Kim. Um, because it is a short presentation, uh, I would like to talk more about the motivation and how I have an idea of this work rather than some technical stuff. Okay, so, okay. Um, as you know, the homomorphic encryption is a crypto system which allows uh, the computation on encrypted data without any decryption process. So it may uh, regard it as a perfect data privacy. But actually there always exists um, some gap between theory and practice. What it means is that uh, uh, in homomorphic encryption, it still has some limitations in computational efficiency. And the uh, one of the main reasons for this uh, factor is actually the the basic homomorphic operations are restricted. And um, so, um, uh, in, at a high level, uh, we can classify the uh, encryption method in homomorphic encryption by wordwise approach and bitwise approach. So, in wordwise approach, the it basically support addition and multiplication, but uh, it is not good at uh, logical operations, including comparison. On the other hand, in bitwise approach, um, it basically supports uh, logical operations, but it is not good at addition and multiplication, so polynomial evaluation. So in this paper, uh, we focused on this wordwise approach, and uh, our goal is to ensure that the wordwise approach is still efficient even when the polynomial evaluation and logical operations are uh, both of them are required, uh, uh, which actually uh, happens in most of the real world applications quite often. So uh, when we look into the wordwise uh, approach, then actually we all uh, since we only have two tools, uh, addition and multiplication, so. It is quite natural to think of the polynomial approximation to evaluate non-polynomial functions, including the comparison function. Uh, in perspective of um, polynomial approximation, actually we already know some a number of um, uh, general methods. However, uh, there exist some limitations of this kind of general polynomial approximation methods. So what it is, is that, um, they commonly aim to find the relation between the degree and error bound. So 
It means that they output a minimal degree polynomial within a certain error bound under some predetermined, predetermined error measure. But the number of multiplications, which we call complexity in this paper, is also a very, uh, very important factor and even more critical in homomorphic encryption because there exists a large computational overhead compared to plain, uh, plain state computation. So in this perspective, uh, we came to the following natural question that can we find the new polynomial approximation method with minimal complexity rather than minimal degree? Um, here we denoted the sine function because it is computationally equivalent to the comparison function. So at a high level idea, uh, we share some similar idea with the previous work presented at last year Asia Crip. And it is and uh, it is to approximate a non-polynomial function with some structured polynomial. So uh, to be precisely, um, when we want to evaluate some unstructured polynomial, which means that we do not know any information other than its degree, then it requires at least square root degree multiplications. This is kind of the theoretical lower bound. However, uh, when we uh, evaluate some structured polynomials, like for example, composite polynomial, then it may requires only log degree multiplications. So what it means is that um, if you want, if we can approximate some non-polynomial function through some structured polynomial rather than unstructured polynomial, then maybe the degree would be get some larger, but we may achieve much smaller complexity. So this idea is actually uh, applicable to both the previous work and this work, but the main difference is that the previous work finds the structured polynomials uh, from some existing algorithms in numerical analysis. On the other hand, in this work, uh, we design such uh, st structured polynomials ourselves by capturing some uh, core properties in mathematical uh, perspective. So now the homomorphic comparison problem was reduced to some simple mathematical problem that how can we design a good polynomial app such that its composition gets close to the sine function over some predetermined interval and very fastly. And uh, our specific goal became to find some core properties of this basic, basic polynomial app uh, to solve this problem. So uh, I will now explain some details, uh, technical details to, uh, of the construction of our polynomials, but this illustration shows that the, uh, the composition of our device polynomial, which we did on it, which, which we did not note it as Fn, actually gets close to the sine function. And uh, we also propose some uh, acceleration method that uh, which implies that a uh, mixed composition of some different polynomials, Fn and Gn, can be a much better choice than a pure composition of Fn. And, for more details about the construction and convergence analysis of our device polynomials Fn and Gn, please refer to our full paper and full video. Um, in summary, uh, we have proposed a complexity optimal homomorphic comparison method for worldwide homomorphic encryptions, especially for the CKKS scheme. This is this was the uh, follow-up study of the previous work presented at last year Asia Crip which only achieved the quasi-optimal solution and which was actually impractical to use. On the other hand, in this work, we propose some kind of optimal, uh, opti uh, we achieved the optimal complexity in some condition. And it, shows, it also shows some nice performance that it is now comparable to bitwise homomorphic comparison method in running, amortized running time sense, which has been regarded as some, the most natural and efficient way for homomorphic comparison. And also in the mathematical perspective, we our work can be viewed as a new framework, composite polynomial approximation for the sine function. And we believe uh, it can be, uh, it, it has a potential to be applied to some more general functions like step functions. And this is the end of my talk and thank you for listening. Um, thank you very much for your talk. Um, I don't see any question, uh, but okay. I have I I have a question. So, um, the, well, you mentioned this in the end. So, 
to which extent can you make a general theory out of this? So to which extent you think there are other functions that have good approximation in this measure? So uh, actually, uh, in this paper, we just targeted the sine function for uh, through the composite polynomial approximation. But uh, when we think of some uh, nature of this approximation method, we believe it can be naturally extended to some step functions. And uh, in mathematics, we can approximate uh, arbitrary function with some uh, linear sum of uh, step functions. So in Theoretical review, I think this method can be applied to some arbitrary function, but this is not about how practical it is. So I think it would be a very interesting uh, topic. Uh, I have one more question. Uh, okay. Have we ever tried to, to select other uh, message space, like uh, except uh, bit or word? I will, uh, yeah. Uh, so you mean some kind of middle point, intermediate point of word and bit? Or so, rather than word. Uh, yeah, yeah. So um, actually, uh, at least in this work, we haven't considered some kind of um, some cryptographic situation, uh, cryptographic difference situation, like uh, the difference in message space. We just focused on some uh, uh, when we have restriction that we only what we only can do is addition and multiplication, then what what is the most efficient way? So I think uh, like for example in B and BGB, there is message space like um, with modulo P, and in that kind of situation, um, we can consider some more uh, uh, more way like because we have now we have addition and multiplication and modulo operation, so. I think uh, considering this kind of some new stuffs can be uh, uh, some extension of this work, okay. but not included in this work. Yeah, thank you. Okay. So I guess it's, we have to move to the next session. Thank you. Thank, we thank all the